Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Sam Crack and the Audi RS7 is almost ready to go in for its state rebuild inspection. Even though it might not look like it now, this car is almost finished. Over the last few days, I've done a good amount of work on the RS7. I wanna show you guys exactly where I'm at and what I need just to finish up and button up a few things. Before I jump in and show you exactly where I'm at on the RS7, I gotta tell you guys about Honey because it saved me a good amount of money on my recent trip to the auto parts store. Honey is like free money. It's a shopping tool that searches all over the internet for the best coupon and promo codes to add to pretty much any site you probably already shop on, like me who goes to the auto parts store to buy a lot of local pickup items. While I was in the middle of the exhaust install on the RS7, I needed a few things. I had to grab a few exhaust clamps. I wanted to get a little bit of scratch remover for the Corvette while I was there. And well, I bought another auction car and I'll tell you about it soon. That needed a brand new battery. I threw everything in the cart for local pickup, and before I paid, Honey worked its magic, saving me over $50 on that trip alone. It only takes two clicks to install Honey, it's totally free, and it saves people about 30 bucks on average. So really, there's no reason for you not to get Honey right now. Go ahead, jump to my link in the description box below, or visit joinhoney.com slash samcrack. When you're rebuilding these cars and you're missing miscellaneous pieces with the amount of trips I make to the auto parts store and online auto parts purchases, Honey has already saved me hundreds of dollars. So thank you very much to Honey for sponsoring this video, and I really encourage you to check it out. By the looks of this mess in front of me, I hope you guys all believe that I've been diligently at work on the RS7. I swear to you I have been. We'll start down here with our stock down pipes. I've replaced them with the aftermarket stage two down pipes with race cats. Those are all fitted up right here and also underneath the car, but it's still quite a bit disassembled in the back end here. There's a heat shroud that goes back there and a bunch of plugs are undone. Soon I'll be unveiling all that. I took a ton of time-lapse footage, so you will see the entire install. Also, we are putting in an Army Trix exhaust and that is also partially installed. Here, let me give you guys a sneak peek underneath the car. Take a look at that beautiful Army Trix exhaust. This is like the center section and we mounted it up perfectly to our aftermarket cap pipes, which is amazing because a lot of times when you use two different brand products, you gotta cut, you gotta weld, none of that at all. We just did a little bit of adapting and it fit perfectly. I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it in our main exhaust install video. But the entire exhaust is not finished and that's because while well, we are missing a few parts back there, I'm gonna show you in one second. Before we get to that, Notice that these red wires are all exposed here. There's actually some other wires exposed on the passenger side as well. It's tough to see. This car comes with factory covers underneath pretty much the entire car with the exception of where the exhaust is. And while mine are all missing, obviously because the body shop that disassembled the car, well, they took them off and that's unfortunate. Let me show you these right here. These are the fender liners. These are what go underneath all the wheel wells. All four of mine are missing. I started online to look for those fender liners, had no luck there, and it's kind of a large and awkward part to ship, so that makes a lot of sense. The best place to buy something like that would be at a wholesale parts yard or like a salvage yard. There's not a lot of them around me with A7s or RS7s, and I do think that the RS7 fender liner is a little bit different because this car has these really uh, big intercoolers in the fender well here. I went to the dealership, asked for the four fender liners. The wholesale price was 135 bucks on them. I said, great, and I totally forgot, but the guy told me that there's actually two other pieces that fit in exactly for those intercoolers that I told you about. So the fronts are actually split in two. I said, fine, just throw them on there. I didn't ask the price for those. Those were another $135 a piece. So literally four fender liners, two front pieces, they're right here. Okay, so they just mount to the fender liner and then mount to the underside of the car down there and two exhaust gaskets. These are my old ones. The new ones are in the car now. I got a bill for over $900. Now, it wasn't the worst thing that could have happened. These prices were all wholesale, so they did cut me a break on the pieces, but when you're shopping for stuff like fender liners, if I would have just found the right place to actually send them to me, I'm sure that someone would have sold all four with the pieces for a couple hundred bucks max. Now talking about the dealership parts prices, the part that we are missing back here that is keeping me from finishing the exhaust installation, our exhaust brackets are gone. Underneath here there should be like a 
screw that comes out of the metal, and then it just bolts up into that. Car was in a rear end collision, damaged the mufflers in that rear end collision, makes a lot of sense. Collision shop would just go ahead, unbolt those brackets completely out of the car, and rip the mufflers out of the car at the same time. So I called the Audi dealership up, I ordered them, and then I got the price of $100 for two exhaust brackets. This car used the same exact exhaust brackets found on most Audi Volkswagen cars. So went online, of course, found one that will fit this car and 17 bucks a piece shipped in two days. So they are arriving today. That is what is holding me up. Just finishing this exhaust install completely. Once everything is bolted up, we can do a final test fit, snug everything down and hear what this thing sounds like. And from the few little test sounds I've heard online, it should be absolutely incredible. I can't wait for it to be finished. That video will definitely be the next one in this series. So we talked about the exhaust, the engine bay, those fender liners that were expensive. We've only got a few other things that need to be repaired before this car is finished. And those are here in the interior. You might remember from the last video, I pulled all the seat belts out of the car and sent them in for repair. Now one one of the things I did at the same time was ask you guys whether or not you wanted me to convert the color from the black seat belts that come in the car to red. The poll results were overwhelmingly one-sided. Everybody wanted to see red seat belts. So here's a picture that the guys from my airbag sent me. They're on the way back to me now. We're gonna put them back in the car and then I'm gonna show you how I clear airbag lights on pretty much all of these cars that I get that have airbag or seatbelt malfunctions. So that's pretty much it. If we rectify all these issues on the RS7, it'll be good to go in for a rebuild inspection. But there is one last thing and is what I anticipate being the most difficult part of this rebuild process and that is actually inside the rear hatch of the car. I got this huge box in from Germany. It's actually the rear pieces of trim for this car. Let's pop it open and let's see if they give us any clue as to what is going on back there. The upside to ordering from Germany, beautiful, beautiful condition pieces. These are really nice. The downside, I think they sent me both the same side and I'm positive I ordered two different sides. Look, there's a uh, outlet here and there's also an outlet there, which uh, we'll see really quick if they fit in, but these are both the same piece and uh, man, I hate when this stuff happens. If you check out my eBay orders right here, you'll see that this one was a boot panel right and then the other one was a boot panel left. Yep, these are definitely the same piece. Look, this ends in 9BT, and this one also ends in 9BT. It's nearly impossible to return this stuff because the return shipping from the United States to Germany on something that large is like hundreds of bucks. I only paid $100 a piece for these. The Audi dealership wanted like $300 a piece, so you could argue that I could just resell one here in the United States for a little bit more money, but it'll be a good amount of time, I would imagine, before somebody comes to me needing one of these. Here's a refresher of what our boot looks like now. You can see it's completely naked, missing all the trim pieces. Why I said that these trim pieces might explain a few mysteries is because I'm trying to fit this one in, kind of just test fit it in place while I'm talking to you, is that there's a lot of electrical wiring harnesses hanging here. Uh, on the other side, there's actually two or three. There's one down here. There's another one behind it right there. And so these obviously plug into like, here's one that goes into there. I'm guessing that's a two prong and there's only two prongs there. So that's exactly right. So this is for our uh, 12 volt. Then we're gonna have one up here that's our LED light that is uh, missing out of this piece, but that is probably right there. I guess this is our last mystery then. We'll figure out what that pops into. The biggest mystery and what I think will probably be one of the biggest challenges is figuring out why the trunk or the hatch will not close. This is the button that I grabbed from uh, the boot liner that goes over here, and when you press it, well, it does nothing. These are electronically actuated shocks and they're stuck in the open position. You can see if I try to close it, which I'm not gonna put a lot of pressure on it, it is just completely open. Uh, I don't know why that doesn't work. If I hit the unlock button here on the key, 
that does unlock the door to the, to the car, but if I hit the lift gate here, doesn't do much anything because it is stuck in this open position. So if you guys have any idea why this would be stuck, I've got a VAGCOM or a Volkswagen Audi computer and uh, I did a big scan on it the other day and I printed out the log but I haven't got the chance to look at it. While we're on this topic, I remember disconnecting a few plugs in a module that was sitting right there to get to the seat belt that is right behind it. Let me see if plugging those in do anything for us. Right here is the uh, module. It's actually got a little speaker in it. If you remember in the past, uh, this thing beeped when we worked on it. Now, where do these things plug into? Right here and right here. Let's see here. If I can get it in with the camera still in place. All right, everything's plugged in. Let's see what happens now. Yeah, same thing. I forgot one other thing. It's just the rear air springs that are missing out of both sides rear suspension. Those are also coming from Germany. Fingers crossed that they do send both the right pieces. Although I think they're actually, maybe they are the same, maybe they're not. They're really easy to hook up. Only take about 10 minutes. When we get those in, we will take this thing on our first drive as long as there's no major malfunctions or anything like that when I go to actually start it and run it for a few minutes. And one way or another, we'll get this trunk closed on that drive. So buttoning up the exhaust, which we're gonna do right now, those air springs, which like I said, are only a few minutes, figuring out the rear hatch, interior seat belts, and then just general reassembly of the car. I mean, the thing is almost finished. This car has been really easy to work with and I attribute that to the rear end damage instead of the front end damage I'm typically used to dealing with. Now, while we're talking about front end damage cars, you might notice that the Corvette is where the Focus RS was. So for the many people who have asked where the Focus RS is, well, it's not here, it's at a body shop, finally getting the framework done, and the second it comes back, there'll be a big update because we'll be reassembling the front end. Now for the three of you that asked about this car, the Corvette Grand Sport, all we need to do on this is reinstall the front buckles. This car is pretty much done. All the major damage that was in this front corner area here, I say major, it wasn't really that major, just needed a lot of assembly, has been done. The one thing that the Corvette needs badly is a major, major cleaning. This front bumper was the only piece that was repainted and the front bumper also needs a little bit of a scuff and a polish to match the clear coat finish on the rest of the car. And then we should be really, really good to go. At this point, I'm just waiting anxiously for the mail truck to show up with my exhaust bracket so I can finish the install of the Army Trix exhaust on the RS7. I can't wait to hear what it sounds like and I hope you guys stay tuned for the next episode. If you're excited about the Army Trix exhaust on the R7, be sure to hit that like button. Also, if you're not already following me on Instagram, be sure to do so at Sam, C-R-A-C-C, -C. that's Sam Crack with two C's. I post a lot of pictures of the RS7 work before they show up here on YouTube. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you very soon.